Welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're all safe, I hope you're doing well. Today I've decided to make a quick video talking about my top 5 tips and tricks in Premiere Pro. I started my filmmaking journey about 3 or 4 years ago and I still have fresh in my memory the things that used to really annoy me when it comes to editing in Premiere Pro. The things that just make me waste a lot of time, that made me get angry and just annoying little things that when I figured it out I was like... Ah... Uh... Today I'm gonna share that with you, I tried to combine them all into one quick little video and even if you've been editing for a while, you might find a thing or two that you haven't picked up on yet because I definitely like some of these things I found out after like a year, after two years. So without further ado, we're gonna jump onto the computer, launch up Premiere Pro and get right started. Alright, so we're inside Premiere Pro and we're gonna start off with some keybinds. I actually don't use that many keybinds, but the ones that I do use are essential in my workflow and I just couldn't live without them. The first one is gonna be zooming in and zooming out on your timeline. When I was beginning, I used to go down here, drag in, and do like this. That's not the way to do it. What you wanna do is you wanna go up to Premiere Pro, keyboard shortcuts, you wanna search for zoom, and just bind zoom in and zoom out to your preferred keys. I have it on A and D. So when I scrub through an edit, all I have to do is click, spam A to zoom in, spam D to zoom out again. Oh, maybe I wanna check out that clip. Spam A, spam D. So that's just a really easy way to zoom in and out on your timeline. The second keybind that I use all the time is the one that cuts up your footage without having to use the mouse. We wanna cut the footage right here when I'm starting to talk. The way I'd usually do this is to press C, add a cut, press V again, select this clip and delete it. Obviously it's way faster to just press S, which is the keybind that I chose. So go up to keyboard shortcuts, add edit and choose whatever keybind you prefer. And that leads us into the next keybind because you know we cut the footage right here, we deleted the clip, everything is fine, but we have this empty space here. And that's not good because you're gonna have to zoom out and drag the timeline back all the time if you wanted to start in the beginning. So the way to solve that is to instead of press delete, I press R on my keyboard. And that simply deletes the clip and takes all the other clips and drags them back as well. Ripple, delete. So simply go here, search for ripple delete and choose the keybind that you want. The fourth and final keybinds that I use are Q and W that I use for something called Ripple Edit. And the way that works is instead of cutting the footage, instead of pressing delete, instead of doing everything we just did, you simply press Q if you want to cut the footage right here, for example, Q. And that just cuts it, deletes it and drags it back all in one go. Now the clip is starting exactly where we want it to start and Q works the way that it deletes everything behind and you press W, it deletes everything after that. The second thing we're gonna talk about is something called nesting. And as you can see here in the project that I'm currently working on, all these green clips are nested clips. And when I was beginning, I thought that nesting simply meant that you could mark over these clips, press nest, and now all those clips became one big clip that you can move around. I guess that could be useful sometimes, but that's definitely not the reason that all my clips are nested right here. But now I'm going to show you why almost all my clips here are nested sequences. Okay, so we have this beautiful clip here of my friend Paulina walking up a mountain ridge somewhere in Indonesia. We want to add some warp stabilizer to this footage because as you can see it's quite shaky, so let's add some warp stabilizer. Alright, so the clip is stabilized and everything is looking good, but since I'm shooting in 100 frames per second I also want to add some slow motion. So. Let's add 25% speed and it's not going to work because warp stabilizer and speed can't be used on the same clip. The way to solve this problem is to nest it and then you can add your slow motion, right? Nope, you're not going to get your smooth slow motion because the frame rate gets left behind in the clip below. The way to actually do this to use warp stabilizer and slow motion on the same clip, you use your slow motion first. So we have this shaky clip, but it does have slow motion. And then you want to nest it. And then you put the warp stabilizer on it. And now we have a smooth slow motion clip. And the second main reason that I use nesting all the time is this. We have this clip right here. We don't need to stabilize it, but we do want to add some speed ramping to it. So let's go to clip keyframes, time remapping and speed. Add a keyframe there and we want to increase the speed quite a lot. So 
boom, it's ramping in and in the middle here we want some slow motion so let's drag it down to 25% and then we want it to ramp out again. So let's put a keyframe here and ramp it out really quickly. So now we have a speed ramped clip and to add some extra spice to this I actually want to put some keyframes with the scale as well to zoom in a little bit. So let's drag this back to there and then 150 to zoom in. And now it should go from 100 to 150, right? But it doesn't. It stays at 150 because keyframes, whatever it is, simply doesn't work once you have time remapping. So the way to solve this, you guessed it, we nest the clip. And now we can go up here to scale, 100 in the beginning, 150 there, and it's gonna zoom in with the keyframes, just like we want to. So this third tip is going to be a really easy one, but I find it very, very useful, so I don't want you to miss out on it. So let's say you're working on your edit here and you're trying to find some clips that match together and you come to a point where you go like, hmm, this would match perfectly with that clip I had from Vietnam. You go into your Vietnam folder and it was on May 9th in Hanoi. You double click this and you get this weird little window that you can play the clip through. And you're like, yeah, that's the right clip, that's the one I want to use. So you drag it onto your timeline. It's a really big clip and you want to use this part where the moped drives there. Boom, and reveals that lady. So we cut up that clip and put it up here. Easy, right? Oh, we have sound on it. We don't want sound. So unlink the sound and delete that layer. Perfect, we're done. That is actually not the easy way to do it. The way you would do it is you go to your folder, open up this window, and you get to the point where you want it to start. You press I on your keyboard, and then you scrub to where you want it to end, and then you press O on your keyboard. And now you have the option to drag only the video or only the audio, or both. So if you drag here, you get the video only, and you get the only the part that you selected up here. And if you drag here, you get the audio. And if you drag from the clip, you get the audio and the video, but the clip is still cut up exactly the way you wanted it to. All right, so the fourth tip is gonna be something that I like to call color masking. And the way that works is that we can use Lumetric Color to change only certain parts of the image. So this is a clip I have from a tutorial that I shot recently and I like the color grade, but since the sun was shining and everything, it's a bit warm here on the walls. I would like to cool it down a little bit. So we go to the clip and we put some minus temperature and weird stuff starts happening to my face, but I do like the way it works in the background with a clean, cool background. The way to solve this is to go to the Lumetric color layer that was just created when we dragged down the temperature. So we drag it down and we get a Lumetric color layer on the actual clip. And you want to choose that, create ellipse mask. And now it's even weirder. Now I have a cool face and the background is warm. And that's definitely not what we want. So you want to press inverted. So now I have a really, really warm face, but you can see, <laughs> you can see the edges of the mask. So you want to feather the mask a bit, like so. I want to adjust it so it fits my face more accurately and maybe we want to push it up a notch because it's quite cool in the background so maybe we want it somewhere around there and we also want to put more focus on my face to make it less distracting with this background so we want to lower the exposure a bit as well like that that actually looks a lot better my face looks kind of weird though but <laughs> if we disable the layer you can see the changes that we made. We have a cool, darker background and my face is nice and warm. So now we have this beautiful color mask on my face here and we put it right there, but my face is moving around a little bit. So maybe we want the mask to actually track my face. The way to solve that problem is to add some keyframes. And luckily for us, we don't have to do it ourselves. Premiere Pro is gonna do it for us. Simply drag to the beginning of the clip, put it in the middle of the face, and press mask path and the play button. 
So now Premiere Pro is gonna work its magic and we can just wait for this progress to finish. Okay, so we've now waited for a few seconds or minutes depending on how good your computer is and Premiere Pro has created loads of keyframes for us down here. And as you can see, the mask is perfectly following my face. And if the face or whatever object you chose to uh, put the color mask on is moving really quickly, you might have to go in and do some small changes yourself. But in this case, it looks really good. The same technique is also very useful when you have a wide shot like this and you want the eye to focus a little bit more to the center of the image, for example. So we use the exact same technique. We go to the clip here, reduce the exposure, add a mask, invert, add some feathering, maybe make it a bit bigger like this, maybe actually increase the exposure a bit more to make it less brutal. And now it's a very subtle change but your eye is going to focus a little bit more to the middle of the road instead of having to look at a lot of different places. So this is the before and this is the after. And that could be very useful sometimes. So the fifth and final tip is going to be a really easy one as well, but also a very important one. I wasted a lot of time before I knew this and I don't want you to make the same mistake. So let's say I'm finished with this edit and I want to add some sound effects and maybe I want to see if there's some original audio that I could actually use in my sound design. The way to actually do this, to get your original audio or your original clip or whatever stuff you want, but the original is to just press F. You get the same window up here that we used before and it's automatically made the in and out point the exact same as your clip. So now you can just use the same technique that I taught you before and just drag your audio like this. And there you have your original audio file. Actually that layer is muted, but here we have it. All right, so that's gonna be it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. I wanted to make this video as quick and easy as possible, so I went over these things quite fast. If you want some more in-depth on some of these subjects, please leave a comment down below asking for the specific thing you wanna know more about, and we can maybe make a video about that in the future. With that said, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or a subscribe, that really helps the channel, and now I actually have to go shoot the freelance project, so yeah, until next time, guys. Peace. Oh,